What takes when you take an important good speech and use it instead of your talk and don't preach? Amanda Gorman, a black poet from the States, she spoke to Americans, but I think it relates to Judaism, Britain and humanity. I'm going to read it. Amanda, for forgive my insanity. The fact that I am reciting it and I am a white man changes the meaning a lot, but the plan is not to appropriate poem I've read, but only to learn from what she said. In order to make it appropriate, I changed some of the lines a bit. I took words like government and replaced it with humanity. Although Amanda and I have never met, I believe this is what she meant. Well, most likely she didn't mean it, but nevertheless, she delivered an important message. And I was so impressed by the, wor by the world she envisages. So I will read it now. Here it is. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of just, of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours. Before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed the world that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of the world and the time, where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president, only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose the world committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and con conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our dif differences aside. We lay down our arms so that so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we are to live up to our own time, then victory won't line in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare, because being human is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our world rather than share it. Would destroy any country if it meant delaying the peace and this effort very nearly succeeded. But while peace can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs 
of such ter a terrifying, terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to offer a new chapter, to offer hope and laughing to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, the world that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation, because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritors of the next generation. Our blunders became their, bu their burdens. But one thing is certain, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind the world better than the one than the one we were left with. Every breath from my chest. We will, ri we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold-limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind-swept east, where our forefathers lie in peace. We will rise from the post-truth. We will rise from all ages, elderly and youth. We will rebuild, reconcile and recover, and every known nook of our world and every corner called by any word, our, our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge. Battered and beautiful, when day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. What happens when you take an important good speech and use it instead of the talk and don't preach? You take some words like democracy and replace it with peace. I hope there is a parallel here that you can see. Amanda Gorman, a young poet from the States, she spoke to the American nation, but I think it translates to, Brit to Britain, humanity and the Jewish world. It's a reminder of commandments not fully observed. She follows the footsteps of prophets who spoke truth to the power when the world around them broke. Religion is more than Shabbat and Kashrut. It's about making peace with your neighbors and roots. Religion is more than the Exodus story. It's to feel people's pain and to say, I am sorry. It's about saying, if not now, then when? It is about trying again and again. It's about belonging and feeling at peace. It's not with your past, of, if not with your past or future, with your present at least. It is when you hear and admit that you've heard to listen to others and don't pretend that you own it. It's about your actions, repentance and change. It's about making difference, not formal exchange. It's about believing that more you achieve, the more you need balance to give and receive. It's about the hope for the better world. It's about making plowshare instead of a sword. It's about dreaming a future of home. I should probably pause here. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>